Hi guys, uh, today we have with us Harvey Jason, who was in The Lost World. Um, welcome to the show, Harvey. It's an honour yeah, having you on. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, um, we're all, obviously, as we said before, we're all big fans of the movie and we're big fans of your character. And um, we do really appreciate you coming on. I mean, I contacted you last week and luckily you said you'd come on, so that's great. Um, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it's on it. Um, I mean, I don't know, how, how are we going to do this? Are we, does anyone have any questions at first, or do we just want to sort of... Well, I, I'd like to pitch the first question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I just want to know about uh, if anything you want to... All your experiences of being on set of The Lost World, have you got anything that springs to mind, like, sort of instantly, what you remember well, when you think back to that time? Was... Yeah, it's a long time ago. I mean, this was, what, uh, 97? Yeah. And, um, yeah, we were on it for only about four months, and it was, it was a very tight-knit company. I mean, there were, there were about ten of us that were actually starring in the picture, and, and everybody was really, um, very nice. There was no, no, with no temperament, you know, and there was no clash of, of personalities. Um, Stephen was, was, uh, was very nice, uh, to all of us. Um, Janusz Kaminski is just uh, absolutely terrific. He's to Janusz is. I saw Janusz not that long ago. Um, we both are on the um, foreign language film committee for the Oscars. I've been on it's my committee for 35 years, and uh, so I had a chance to catch up with Janusz, which was great. And now it was a very um, pleasant experience. In, initially, um, we were supposed to shoot in Australia, All right. and um, Stephen's wife. Uh, Katie was having a baby, and Stephen didn't want to be so far away. So we ended up shooting that that stuff. Uh, where were we? Oh, in Eureka, uh, up uh, in the Redwood country of uh, California, above San Francisco. So we were up there for two or three weeks. I think that's what it was. And then we went uh, and we shot most of it um, on the back lot at Universal. And then we finished up... Um, we finished up in uh, Hawaii. Uh, the unfortunate thing was that uh, all my dialogue is compressed into one, really it was a very long scene in the beginning. And um, for a variety of reasons, um, in the initial theatrical release, Stephen cut that whole sequence. He wasn't happy we, with the extras and the background. And uh, he, I really he enjoyed it. I really enjoy that sequence. Every time I see it on the deleted scenes, I wish they'd have actually put that back in. It's the bar fight, I think it's been on the yeah. it's, on the, it's on the television version, right? Yeah, as far as I, I know. It's in the DVD I think it's in the DVD as well. I'm not sure. But Pete, Pete Parcelthwaite didn't want it. He, did, he actually wanted it cut. He didn't like the fight. Um, and Stephen said to me, you know, Harvey, I said, listen, Stephen, if you cut that sequence, I mean, you cut my dialogue. Just take the billing off. I, it's not, it, I mean, I would be awful. He said, no, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut it. And in the end, um, he, he did, but, uh, he, he put it back. He, he, he's a very, very good director to work with. He's, he's very yeah. friendly and, and there's no, um, no pretentiousness with Stephen. There's no airs. It's just, very imaginative, and, and you know, and also to work with with uh, Stan Winston, uh, may he rest in peace. What a genius Stan was! Oh yeah, Definitely. yeah. I mean, he he was really uh, he was he was on the set all the time, and uh, and we got very friendly. And and he, uh, really, in every sense of the word, this guy was a genius. It was terrific. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. I mean, Harvey. A, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't know you. No, there was a funny, you know, Stephen, uh, when we first, I remember, I always remember this, when we got up to Eureka, um, Stephen, the word came around, Stephen said he's giving us a, uh, giving us a barbecue, just a little barbecue in the woods. And, uh, <laughs> his, his idea of a little barbecue with chefs wearing cokes and the limos to pick us up to take us into the woods. <laughs> I mean, I thought, yeah, we all say, oh, Christ, this is a hell of a, a, hell of a, a country barbecue. <laughs> yeah. But he used to, I mean, they, they would send, they would send, uh, when we were shooting here, they would send um, an individual limo for each of us. But Vince Vaughn, you know, lived, lived near me. And uh, so we said, well, why don't we just share the limo? They said, no, no, you have to, you have, to have one each. 
And then I always remember Vince said to me, no, I love this limo. He said, the best thing about having a limo pick us up, the best thing is the neighbors get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it sounds like it was like a really fun time on set for the um, for the Lost World. Yeah, we we did. We had. I mean, you know, actually, as I think back, uh, physically, it was a, it was very difficult. In in terms, there were sequences where we had to, you know, wade through water and be, you know, hosed down with cold shower water. I mean, it was. There were times we did a lot of night shooting, and it got cold. I mean, it got really cold and and wet. But they they take they took very very good care of us. They really did, you know, with uh, hot drinks and blankets and you know the the comforts of home and big trailers. I mean, they they were very very kind. They're very good to us. Oh, that's cool. Did, is it? Do you mind first? Sort of, how did the role come about? Did he ask you to be in it, or did you audition? Or? No, I hadn't met him, and in fact, I was starting to do another movie, um, and uh, the the um, I got a call. My agent got a call. Called me and said, listen. Would you would you be offended if you came in and um, just put a scene on tape for Steven Spielberg's movie? So I said, no, I wouldn't be offended at all. I'm happy to do it. And uh, <laughs> so I went in and did it. And they said, well, you know, he's going to make a decision in about uh, a week. So I said, that's fine. And I went back, and then they wanted me on this other movie. And uh, the the next day, I called their office and said, listen, I, I wonder whether. Um, I have a question for the woman who was casting the piece. Uh, I, I want to know how soon I could know. I've got to let these other people know. And the, the woman said, hold on for a minute. Let me get her for you. And she came on and she said, hey, Harvey, congratulations. He loved you. You got the role. Yeah, that was oh, that was quick. That was great. Thank you. You know, And uh, that was it. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, um, did you know at the time it was for the Jurassic Park sequel? Or it's well, sort of un- I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose yeah. that was all in the news back then. So. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a. I mean, that's cool. Um, I mean, so I was uh, I was about twelve or thirteen when the Lost World came out, and um, me too. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I mean, that, that although it was like an awesome, it was a great roller coaster of a film. I mean, I, I couldn't help but get saddened by the death of your character, you know, and the the way that. Well, thank uh, you. I was very sad, too, because that meant the paycheck stopped. Yeah, no Jurassic Park (laughs) 3 for you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... uh, The the great thing, I'll tell you something, though, when you work for um, for Stephen, uh, it's a very, very generous time, because the gifts, I mean, they send you these wonderful gifts. The gifts kept coming, I Baccarat vases and uh, all kinds of stuff get sent over. I mean, really, really nice. And then when we, when we, I'll tell you something funny though, and I don't know whether this should be off the record really. Or at the, you know, at the end of, um, the first Jurassic Park, he gave, um, they gave the, the stars of the picture as a, as a rap gift, um, pinball machines with their characters in it. Yeah. And, um, this time, um, they gave us checks. I mean, right. actual dollars, actual money. <laughs> wow. I remember. <laughs> I was at the, I was in the kitchen, and I had done a, a, a thing for Universal. I get fan mail, quite a bit of fan mail, and still. And I was in the kitchen. I went out to get the mail, and um, among the pieces of mail was a, a, a big Manila envelope, Universal. And I thought, oh, they're sending some fan mail. And I opened it up, and um, something fell on the ground. And uh, I looked at it. I picked it up, and it was a very, very nice check, and. The, then I read the letter and it said, oh, it said words to the effect of, um, you know, film is a collaborative art and because we did so well here. I mean, it, it held the box office record for a very, very, very long time. And I think it was the, so well. wasn't it the second biggest film of all time, like before it Titanic was, yeah. came around, yeah. Yeah, for a long period of time. And so the letter said, you know, um, so please accept this as a, as a, as a thank you um, on behalf of... Uh, Stacey Snyder at Universal, and my son was signed Stephen. So I thought, oh my God, this is fantastic. Uh, about five minutes later, the phone rang, and it was it was Vince Vaughn. <laughs> and Vince said, hey, did you get your mail yet? <laughs> I, I, I just did. He said, Jesus, that was fantastic. I said, I'm thrilled. And then he said, yeah, but you know what? I bet Jeff got double this. <laughs> 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 so, so, she- yeah. so I, 
I called, I called um, Stephen. I said, thank you very much indeed. And then I wrote him a note, and I remember saying in the note, thank you so much for such a wonderful gift, Stephen. It's something I've always wanted. Uh. Yeah. I mean, it <laughs> sounds like you and uh, Vince Vaughn had a laugh on the set. Was you sort of like buddies throughout the shoot, or...? Yeah, well, we were all were, really. I mean, Jeff and, and uh, um, Vince and uh, Pete. Uh, you know, it was, as I say, it was a small company, and we, because we were all sort of billeted together, you know, particularly when we were out of town, we all stayed in the same... Like, I remember Eureka. Um, we stayed in this beautiful bed and breakfast, all of us, Stephen and the car. Uh, and then... When we were in Hawaii, we all stayed in the same uh, was a resort place. So, you know, when you sort of break bread with each other and you're together all the time and long hours, you do tend to get quite friendly. But, you know, like anything else in the movie world, when it's over, it's over. Yeah. You know, and I always found that difficult. You know, when it's over, it's over. You can be very close with somebody and then it's finished. The next time right. you're, you're shooting something else with a completely different crowd. They go on to something else, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I, what, I mean, what I was pointing at before is that um, obviously your character, um, it was quite a sad death, I thought. I mean, I was quite moved by it. But we, especially here in the UK, when the film was coming out, there was a lot of promotional pictures and videos and things like that of the that long grass scene of, oh. like the, of the raptors. Um, but actually the finished product in the... Uh, in the movie was quite short and you didn't see yeah, pretty much 75% of the stuff that you'd been seeing before. So I was wondering, did your character sort of, um, had they written a death scene or had you planned to shoot a death scene for your character or was you just meant to sort of... Um... No, it was just meant to go, I think. I think, I haven't seen the script for a long time. No, I think it was just, uh, you know, something about don't go in the long grass or something and, and then he gets, he, he gets eaten by the raptors. There was nothing um, that we shot that was cut about that. Yeah. Uh, but there I mean, were, you know, there was stuff that was cut. It was so long. I mean, it was a very long film, and there were, it needed to be uh, to be cut. I I really can't remember it very well. I haven't seen it for years and years. Yeah. Yeah. Your line, don't go into the long grass, I still quote that every time I go walking my dogs um, <laughs> with my <laughs> mum. I was yeah. <laughs> I'll well, shout that to the dogs because we'll lose them. <laughs> well, actually, actually, when um, when I was in school, um, obviously I was around about thirteen years old when that came out. We used to do these things called school walks every year. Um, the whole school would go on yeah. a fifteen-mile um, school, uh, like a walk into the countryside, because that's sort of where our school was. And um, sort of, especially around that time, you're walking through fields, and all you would hear all day long, sort of, you know, like. Uh, half a mile behind you or half a half a mile ahead of you or even right in front of you, just people all day long going, don't go into the long grass. <laughs> <laughs> so you you actually got probably the most memorable line in that film. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's definitely the most memorable yeah. line in the movie. Oh, that's that's it's on par with Welcome to Jurassic Park from the first one, I'd say. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> now, it was a really fun shoot. I mean, everybody was really pleasant and... Uh, no arguments, no fights. It was it was really fun. I mean, it was fun, and actually for me, it was it was I it was my swan song in the business because I decided to get out of the business right after that picture. Yeah, because you're now running your bookshop at the moment. Yeah, it was always a pipe yeah. dream of mine to open a really first class, first edition collectible bookshop. And my younger son was selling books and didn't have a shop. He was selling up fairs and stuff. And so. I remember saying to uh, to Stephen, you know, when we wrap this picture, I'm in a book business. You know, I'm going to the book. He said, "What?" I said, "I am." And that was we just celebrated the shop's 15th anniversary, and uh, the shop's called one of the one of the most important first edition shops in America. It's really cool, and it's all first editions of Dickens and Hemingway and every classic you can think of. And we do That's a lot. Of, I mean, we're still involved with the business because we do a lot of sell a lot of gifts for the Oscars and all the award shows. We've got a lot of celebrity clients. So, but I'm um, I'm out of that business. Yeah, I mean I, I saw a uh, a video series on YouTube of um, of the Mystery Pier shop, and it, it does look amazing in there. I think I could just go in there and you know not come out for a, sort of two years. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I just I feel that way. I mean, honestly, every time I come in here, I think, oh God, this is a gift from God. This is fantastic, and I really mean it. I'm blessed, you know. It's terrific. 
Yeah, I've um, for what it's worth, I've written a book, and if you ever want a first edition of that, I'll <laughs> send you a copy, and you can have that in I your really shop. Love the book. Um, it's called Through the Dark and the Dawn. Um, you can get it in hardback of a company called Lulu, but I can, if you want, I can give you the details. Through the Dark and the Dawn. Yeah. I'll look that up. I'll look it up. You got to oh, sell thank the you. film right. Yeah, I'm honoured. <laughs> That's amazing. Sell thank you. Right. Sell the film rights quickly. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will. You know, do. I have a, I have a question. If you don't mind me cutting in here. Oh, please. Uh, what was it like uh, working with Pete Possaway? Um, it was a lot of fun. Pete and I were uh, Pete and I were very, very close. Uh, really, seriously, uh, best friends throughout that whole shoot. And um, I was very saddened uh, uh, when he died. His wife and uh, uh, the kids and, and my wife. Uh, kid, we were all together when we shot back here. We were uh, together a lot. Pete was. Um, he was a great guy. He was a great, and he was a terrific actor, a really terrific actor. Yeah, he's a, and he's, um, he's he could regale us with stories, you know. With uh, he was very close with um, um, a lot of people that uh, that I admire. And he, Daniel Day Lewis, was actually studied acting with Pete, and he he was uh, very friendly. It was like best friends. But uh, Pete was um, a very good guy. He he really was uh, very funny and very smart. Yeah. We had some really good times together. Really good times. Excellent. Uh, I'd say, um, if you can, Harvey, I'd say pop in the Lost World and give it a whirl. Because I watched it the other day, and it's incredible. Still is. Holds yeah. up even today. You should definitely well, check it out again. Um, um, as long as that scene of mine in the marketplace is back in, I'll, I'll watch it. <laughs> It's weird because I um, I watched it at the weekend. Obviously, we'd spoken. I, I obviously wanted to go through it again just to sort of study your parts and that. And I watched it with my daughter, who's three and a half, and she absolutely loved it. But what I did notice um, was, you know, if you're not really taking much notice of um, your character, you don't realise actually how much you were doing on screen. Like there was little things where you had the um, was it the coordinates or the the radio signal things that you're sort of playing about with and putting them in your bag and then um obviously when you run into the long grass you you throw it off and that's where jeff goldblum's character picks it up later on so it's almost like you were planting really i don't even remember that (laughs) yeah well that's what i mean it's like i only sort of really spotted it the other day watching it but you're it's almost like your plant your character's planting the seeds to progress the story further, which is pretty cool. So you're like the that's silent very, hero. That's very perceptive, on, very perceptive on your part. That's very perceptive on your part. I, yeah. um, I, I remember that. I, I can't. Well, because when you know, you know, you guys know very well. When you shoot out of sequence, it's very difficult to keep things uh, in a straight line. Yeah. So, a lot of the stuff I don't remember. But <laughs> I remember the first. I remember when we were in Eureka. The very first stuff that Stephen shot was he wanted individual shots of us, uh, each of us uh, responding to the dinosaurs. Yeah. I remember that, 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 that we did that, each of us did that. I think, you know, one after the other, we, we just did close-ups of us seeing those dinosaurs for the first time. And that was really exciting, I must tell you, to go on the set and see all the creatures and see how they were manipulated and the, the sheer genius of, of, you know, the people who not only invent the car, but, but operate them. I mean, brilliant stuff. That it was yeah. a perpetual state of fascination for me to watch all that. Did you personally ever work with any of the animatronics? No, no. The, no was really, were you introduced to them or anything? Stan was explaining stuff to me. Uh, Stan Winston was explaining stuff. and Because uh, his designs were just terrific. His makeup is he's just he's wonderful. He was just, he was great. He was yeah. great. Um, I know there was a lot of um, sort of like promotion around the film with like um, merchandise and that. Did you ever own your own figure? No, I, I have the figure, and um, you know, but I think maybe in the course of what 15, 16 years, maybe I've made two dollars off the sales. <laughs> <laughs> And I made a few dollars off it. But you don't get any money off these things. But it was um, it was interesting to see uh, this big muscular uh, Harvey yeah. Jason. I love that. <laughs> you, you see him. I mean, obviously, when I, I was, it was with the first Jurassic Park. Um, I mean, I was about eight years old, so I was getting all the toys, and they were coming through, and I was like, you know, um, 
is it Wayne Knight who played Dennis Nedry in the first oh, film? Yeah. He, he's all mu- he's he's got a muscular figure, and I was like, that doesn't look like Dennis Nedry. <laughs> 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 you know, I don't know what they're thinking when they're making these toys, but no, no, no. Yeah. But you know, you get a few dollars here and there from the books and the sales and all that stuff. Still, yeah, yeah I mean, do you get a lot of people coming in to your store, just like fans of the film, or just the viewers in general? Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, people do, you know, and um, because the shop, see, the shop gets a lot of publicity. So then, when, when you know, they know when my name comes into it, maybe they've seen me in something or other. <clears throat> they come in, and it's it's fun. It's fun to reminisce. Yeah. Well, that. you got you got three guys right here right now who are big fans of yours. So. Oh, well, that's Proof very enough. kind. Of <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. It's yeah. okay. It's been amazing having you on the show at the moment. Yeah, it's been a... Yeah, well, listen, it really is a pleasure. And, and thank you very much for thinking of me. I'm, I'm delighted that you did, and I'm very flattered, and I'm very honored. So thank you, and all the best of luck to you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, a pleasure, a pleasure. So good luck, continued success. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good hey, day. Hey, this is Ariana Bye. Richards, and you're listening to the Jurassic Cast Podcast. Hello, and welcome to... Jurassic News. My name is Sam and this is your one-stop shop for everything Jurassic Park franchise and Jurassic World sequel news. So let's dive straight into the first subject of today's show. Boom! 